Hi, I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. Today, we're going to uh, look at the primary vision for X spread count and really kind of go through what is driving the number, what's what's been, what do we expect going forward? Because in today's uh, uh, insights that came out a little bit earlier, we were spot on with kind of where we think things are going and how they're progressing in that way. So without further ado, uh, the current uh, frac spread count is 101. So that's a jump from 89 to 101, which is obviously a positive. It's nice to see some activity coming back into the market. Uh, it, you know, if you look at what we said last week, this is uh, this is higher than what we were, what we expected. But as we came into this week and as we started to kind of review some of the data, we saw that there was some activity that was going to come through specifically in the Permian, which we've been talking about and in the Eagle Ford in terms of kind of where some of these things where we kept hearing about it, we kept seeing it, but you know, when did the uh, work actually start? And now we can say with, uh, with relative confidence that that is, it is actually active. And just to kind of put some numbers around it. So now, right now we have five basins that are in double digits, which, uh, which is exciting to see in, in its own right. But when you think about the seasonality of it all, this is typically kind of the seasonal push that we get at the end of September as we go into October. Uh, some other little uh, tidbits. This is uh, the Permian being at 40. The last time we had that was April. So if you kind of think about where we were, which we'll go back in time in a moment, just so you kind of get, get an idea of kind of where we think things are going to go on a go forward level. Now, as we look at the four week rolling average, even though we had a big spike from that 89 to 101, we still have that rolling average at about 91. So again, we, we talked about how, especially in our insights that came out, that we expected the four-week rolling average to move closer to 93, especially as we start to head into the October period, because typically Q4 is where you start to get that push where companies will sit there and say, look, we have X amount left on uh, for cash to be spent on production. Let's put ourselves in a strong footing as we head into the uh, into uh, through Q4 and as we turn into into 2021. So just as you can see, this is like that three month uh, view in terms of kind of where we are. We continue to, to see that drift higher and we start to see some of these moves. Now, April 17th, just to give you an idea of the last time we were actually above 100, April 17th, we went from 147 to 85 the next week. So the last time we were here was actually April 17th. So you get an idea of kind of how long we've been in these, these doldrums. But as we talk about in the past about decline curves and the push to manage those decline curves as we go forward, this is it right here. You know, you can sit, you can't sit back and let your decline curves really catch up with you. You have to stay in front of it, and that's what we're starting to see with some of this activity over over the uh, the this five month decline. And now we're starting to get some of these turnarounds. Now, you know, just to put some color around what we're expecting. So this they came out in the uh, report this morning, but over the next four weeks, you know, my, the expectations is that we're going to get back above 40 within the Permian. Uh, it's probably something closer to 43. If we just think about, you know, where, where we should be as we go forward, that could change. You know, right now we have a little bit, uh, at least uh, I have some clarity in terms of kind of where we think things are going to go through the next two weeks. But again, that could accelerate as well. The other benefit is based on the planning. This doesn't look like it was something that is just coming on spot. This looks like this was targeted work, which is also relatively exciting. If you think about some of the volatility we've had in uh, in oil prices, you might think, well, what happens if oil prices fall down, you know, or, or come under pressure? You know, we've talked about hedging and how there is um, a lot of companies have increased their hedging for the remainder of 2020. They remain fairly un. Uh, I don't want to say light, but you know they're they're not as hedged as they normally are at this time of the year in 2021. Uh, but they are fairly hedged in 2020, and that's going to support some of the work. We could see some of these additions come in as guys look to kind of protect some of the downside. But I don't see anyone trying to cap some of this upside that could be potential in 2021. Uh, so you know, think of think of the Permian seeing another three over the uh, the coming few weeks, and then on the Eagleford, we finally saw what materialized, which is what we've been talking about of this one or two. Uh, the other interesting side, as we go into kind of this this year uh, year over year, 
you can see some of these uh, these these pumps, and you can actually see the huge drop off in April, which is really where we saw that acceleration to the downside. But as we also talked about, as we got below 50, we had refiners actually starting to panic, and other some end users starting to get worried about getting that feedstock. So you saw, you know, that was where we started to get some confidence that, like, yeah, I don't think we can go too much lower because there are people that rely on this end stock and will pay premiums to make sure that they get this feedstock to make sure that they can make those end stocks. So that's one of the, the big things here. And as we see some support in the back end of the curve, specifically in natural gas, we've seen some additional additions in Appalachia and actually the Haynesville. So that's going to be something to watch. You know, as we look forward and as you can kind of see based on where we are on a on a seasonal level, we normally get this little increase. But, you know, when we look at what is going to be the bigger driver coming forward and I, we on Monday we have... Uh, we have a conversations coming out with James West where we go through digitalization, efficiencies, you know, some of these things that are going to help uh, keep activity, uh, I don't want to say increasing exponentially, but at least at, at an upward trajectory as we get some of these efficiencies and these cost savings, you're going to see some activity come back, even though it may not make sense because you're looking at it as like, well, you know, prices are low. It's like, well, there's efficiencies, there's some cost savings, there are things that can be passed on that will help keep some of this activity moving forward. So it's a bit of, it'll be an interesting conversation that we had, we had, we covered a lot of topics. It's going to come out on Monday and that's, and it's, and it really kind of ties into what we're looking at here when we start to see some of these movements and, and some of the AI and other uh, advancements that are starting to get uh, rolled out quickly just because guys are looking to save money, whether that's, you know, increasing safety by pulling guys off the rig or, or away from, um, you know, the moving parts, you know, speeding up the uh, the racking and the movements of the equipment when, once you're on site. You know, there's a lot of things that are being rolled out to try to incentivize and try to bring this cost down to get guys active and to have things moving back in. And as we know, People will pay premiums to keep feedstock coming just because they need to make sure that they can maintain their normal movements. So that's why we think that there's going to be it, there's going to be movements. But it's and I mean, based on what the numbers that we've seen, guys have moved away from some of these fringe and started to core up again. And now, while we've had some increases in the Bakken, the uh, Eagle Fur that we've been talking about, we you know we think at this point now it's really going to be the Permian. And as uh, James West points out, he's uh, he's also seen a lot of activity start to pick back up in the Delaware. So it's going to be interesting to see how this materializes when some of these uh, crews become active, you know, based on what we're tracking. So there's going to be a lot to. Uh, you know, you're going to get a, a lot of talk on oil field service on, on a Friday afternoon, and then we're going to start off the, the week right with uh, on Monday with James and uh, and going through kind of some of these interesting topics that we've covered. And then obviously, as we go through the remainder of the week, we have our, our normal shows of the EIA, uh, the economy, and then obviously our favorite on Friday, the primary vision frac spread count. Uh, we're also going to do something a little a little special in terms of the inflation. We're changing it a little bit. We're going to focus on the dollar now that we've seen Turkey increase rates. You know things are changing a bit, and uh, Nigeria just posted their uh, their November loadings and taking it from uh, up to 1.82 million. So it's another thing that we we're going to look at and just touch on briefly next week. Just looking at you know what are some of the expectations now that we're actually starting to get November loadings and we see Iraq pu uh, pushing in a ton of new uh, new barrels, specifically uh, Basra, and it's going to be interesting. We're, we we wrote about it uh, on our Friday report, but it's something that we're going to uh, cover in a, on a high level just to kind of put into perspective what some of this oversupply looks like. So you know we have you have a, you have a lot to watch. We had a busy week, so uh, enjoy the weekend. Again, I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. Mm -hmm.